Hello and welcome back to the Second Messiah. On the last episode, Vithericus successfully found the Second Messiah within himself, and his people began a quest to conquer the provinces of Africa. Back in Italy, Tarentum was slowly being rebuilt by Saffrax, and the Gothic Horde now settled there, but they had a lot of work to do. Vithericus's first stop on his conquest was the city of Axum, where a powerful army sallied out to attack him as he started a siege. The army wasted its strength in a frontal assault using its cavalry, where the enemy's uh, horses and camels were cut down by javelins, leading to an intense skirmish against all the enemy's reinforcements where they dealt heavy casualties back to us, but eventually we won. Now let's continue. So they have defeated Axum. You will have all heard the rumors that these northerners were successful in finding their new god at the source. My own scouts have not reported any evidence for this, and yet for them to defeat our patrons like that, they must have strength with or without their deity. Whatever, that isn't the point. We can use this situation. With Axum weak and with the Goths exhausted, we can turn a profit from both. We shall march south, capture Axum and the coastal villages, and make Nubatia the foremost provider of eastern trade goods to the north. It is a good day to be a Nubatian, my friends. With the wealth we shall gain from this new chance, and with the Romans finally leaving us alone, we could even grow to make the whole Nile ours. We shall muster an army, an army of men eager to take revenge on the Goths for what they did to us and to take from Axum the riches that they have callously denied us for so long. With such motivations, and our mastery of the desert, I think that although I shall march out a king, I shall return as something more. Perhaps I'll even bag that gothic messiah for myself along the way. Having defeated Axum's main force in battle, the Therakus is now able to quickly overcome the small uh, number of survivors still inside the city. So they are wiped out in a quick auto resolve. The city is ours, the Therakus has taken his first territory on his quest to take all of the provinces of Africa. The settlement itself isn't in ideal shape, but it'll have to do. This is where Pythericus' people will have to live. It is now going to be the new holy site in our empire, being the closest point to the source of the Nile, so this is going to be our base of operations. But first we're going to have to fix it up. You can see it's completely damaged and many of the buildings aren't uh, compatible with Gothic culture, so we may have to change some things up. The good news is it has furs, a trade resource, which uh, makes the province quite a bit more valuable than it would have been otherwise. So I've renamed the place to New Eden, the new seat of Aetherakus' empire, and now he is going to start the reconstruction process and start securing the area. Back in Italia, in Tarentum, the area is plenty secure and the rebuilding process is still underway but still isn't quite completed, but soon that city will be all up and running properly. Now I need to assign someone as a governor of the new province, Ethiopia. I decided that it's finally time for Gylamir to step up and take an official role in our kingdom. So he is now going to be the governor of this new province, his loyalty remaining about even as a result. Axum's forces retreat back to their second town. They have a coastal settlement where their navy is stationed, their very large navy as you can see, and they immediately start recruiting new troops into an army. Now bad news, we learned that a secret meeting against Vithericus is going on and we really need to do something about it. We have several options here. We can kill them, uh, meet them, mess up their plot, or we can try and uh, bring them onto our side. Vithericus is going to go and meet them. He's taking the righteous high and mighty path. So here's Axum's forces. The large navy, as I said, docked at the coastal settlement and an army now recruiting new forces. They're probably going to just keep recruiting up forces uh, for the next couple of turns, meaning they'll go until they have a full stack. That means I need to attack as soon as possible to stop them from doing that, but of course my force isn't in ideal condition to do that. However, I can make use of the large number of local mercenaries to make life a bit easier. For some reason there's some specialist gothic mercenaries around, I guess they were following around the horde and have finally become available to recruit as mercenaries now that we're settling down, and I can recruit desert legionaries, a nice powerful infantry unit into my lines. 
So with the army now bulked out a little bit more, still not at full strength though, we're going to march, we're going to move out of our city and immediately attack Axum's last stronghold there. The public order, order sorry, is deteriorating rapidly, so that means that although the balance bar here is pretty much even, a situation where a siege would be useful, if I keep waiting and allow a siege to happen we're probably going to have a rebellion, I need to sort this issue out quickly. I also realized I, sh I should disband one of the more damaged units and bring in a mercenary onager since I have the chance to do that because that will allow me to destroy enemy towers as I make my attack. I needed to get the money to do this so I had to go and cancel some stuff back in the city itself to make this happen but I thought it'd be worth it because it could make our attack a lot easier and uh, make it much safer to go straight into the attack without any kind of siege in a situation where both sides have equal strength. So let's head down onto the battlefield and give this a go. If there is resistance, I can bring up the boys from the lower district. They all see through the madman's lies. Well, allow me to make those lies just a little more opaque to you all. You, uh, I mean, your worship, oh, what are you doing here? I know what's going on here. And I am here despite the fact half of you want me dead because I am a man of integrity. If you have an issue with the way I'm running this city, tell me. God and I are open to your concerns, and will make sure that his divine plan encompasses your needs, if they sound true. My lord, your your worship, you are mistaken. Well, actually, there is one thing. Pythericus sets up outside Axum's final town, ready to make his attack. My initial plan was to move those mercenary onagers up to sit just outside the range of two of their towers, giving me a prime position from which to destroy them and free up a route of attack for the main body of infantry. The enemy's forces are coming out to defend the approaches into the town, fine by me as long as they just stand there and allow me to destroy the towers before I approach. That huge navy, plus a garrison navy, is coming in towards my flank though, posing a potential threat to this plan because they're going to be landing forces uh, around the back of my forces essentially. So I'm going to have to adjust my plan to account for this. You can see the balance bar, despite being um, even on the campaign map, is now extremely far in the enemy's favour. It seems the battle has reassessed things, so I'm not feeling so confident anymore at this point. I'm going to pull back from my attack and uh, generally prepare for an enemy attack from the naval front whilst the enemies just stand off on the town. The best thing I can hope for is that they'll continue to defend, I'll be able to fight the navy with most of my army, defeat it, and then hopefully after that we'll have forces remaining to make an attack on the town. So I'm starting to pull back across the board and set up new fronts ready to receive the enemy's landing forces who look like they're going to land all along this wide stretch of beach. They've got a variety of different types of forces here. Most Mostly they're going to be um, melee infantry, so I, I'm going to need to fight them off with melee infantry of my own, so I can't commit any of those to the attack. I'm using hurlers here to defeat some enemy hurlers actually who are just sitting offshore. I thought they brought their boat in to attack me, but actually they're just sitting in the boat taking the stone, so my hurlers are able to defeat this first enemy regiment before it lands, quite handy. Many of the enemy's boats out here, as you can see, seem to be indecisive about whether they should land. They're going round in circles, perhaps just trying to line up their approach towards the beach for the best spot, with so many other boats in the way, making it difficult. But uh, all of that dilly-dallying gives me more time to set up a line uh, facing that general direction. Here you can see some mercenary falcsmen that I've recruited into my army, a heavy attack unit that should do very nicely against the enemy once they land. My hurlers have uh, defeated that one unit as they rout off the field, but then, of course it's been replaced by tons of enemy ships, so the hurlers aren't going to be able to take out the rest, the enemy are going to be able to land. Meanwhile back in the town, the enemy are sort of creeping out, you can see here they've got cavalry and camels who are coming out of their defensive formation towards my position, you can see I've left a small position covering the town with archers and onagers, but uh, the main body of my infantry is over here, so the enemy can now make a flank attack on me by attacking out of the town. Finally, the enemy's forces are starting to land. My hurlers need to get off their beach before the enemy's melee infantry take them out. As the enemy land, they're going to be taking javelins from my melee troops just over the hill. My guys actually can't see the enemy, so it's not going to be as effective as it could be. But uh, I don't really need to be at this point, because the enemy's small unit size means it's actually quite hard to hit them with javelins. So the enemy come up over this hill, and I begin a counter charge. These enemy units are not going to do very well against my troops, as you can see they lost almost all their men even before they engaged, and then the Falcsmen come in to finish them off there. But uh, the enemy have a lot of them, so we're going to need to be careful, because all of these little units coming in from different directions are going to start catching my guys in the rear and applying morale shocks to my units. 
but overall the melee fight should go okay. A skirmish fight has started meanwhile back over at my siege screen. I'm using my archers to fend off the enemy's skirmish cavalry, a fight that I should win, so I'm happy to let that just continue on for now, but as you can see there, the enemy are sneaking out more and more units from the town, almost indecisive about whether they should make an attack. So here, the enemy are going to engage with my melee infantry. The Falksmen starting to actually take a good number of losses because once they're engaged in combat, they're not very good. They're really just a charging unit. But the initial wave of enemy landing forces has been broken. Still more to come, though. I'm starting to react to the enemy coming out of the town by disengaging somewhat from the naval screen and coming back to fight with the enemy's main forces coming from the town. You can see they made a cavalry attack on my archers out there, but I use spearmen to repel them, so things are still going okay. But Therakus himself was being targeted by artillery fire. He took some losses from these boulders just falling down from the sky. I actually forgot about this when I started the battle, but the enemy do have artillery ships. So only now do I start to really react to this. They've got these three artillery ships out at sea, just bombarding the Therakus in particular with these stones. So there's a chance he could be assassinated by a lucky shot here. So I need to keep moving him around to stop him being hit. The bloody beaches are a testament to us defeating the majority of the enemy's landing forces here. Still a few more are landing in and joining the battle, but mostly the battle is won on this point. The enemy's navy has been wiped out by my forces, the loss is quite minimal. So we're now able to bring forces back towards the main fight. The Falksmen here leading that attack, those are the unit, uh, sorry, one unit that did not take minimal losses, they lost almost all their men already. Back over by the Onagers, I'm now setting up a spear wall because the enemy's main body of infantry from inside the town appears to be setting up for an attack on this position. The Onagers still haven't even fired yet because I was saving their ammunition to attack the towers, but at this point it's becoming clear I'm not going to need to attack the towers. This battle is going to happen entirely outside of the town, so they are now free to fire at any enemies they can see. So here the enemy come, bringing in their levy spears to make an attack on my Germanic spearmen who are in a spear wall, a situation where we should definitely win, uh, perhaps uh, not for these guys who are trapped outside of the line. Luckily, this guy's comrades come to help him out and stop him being overwhelmed by the enemy since he was out of formation. So the spear wall uh, keeps the enemy busy while my small reserve of uh, legionaries there come in to flank the enemy. Back on the beach, there are still some guys to finish off. They've landed some of their hurlers, who I guess have run out of ammunition and decided to fight with me in melee, and uh, my men are obviously going to wipe them out. Further down the beach, there's a couple more enemy units still fighting here against my cavalry. Vithericus is helping them out. I moved them in uh, just for the sake of moving Vithericus, but since he was here, he might as well kill these men. And the artillery ships have stopped firing because they're out of ammo, and they actually land their crew at this point, so we're going to have the ability to take revenge. So the beach is now cleared up, you can see all of my forces are now rushing back towards the main fight. But the main fight's actually going okay. My legendaries and spear legendaries sorry, and spearmen are holding up well against the enemy's attack. The enemy's low quality infantry uh, just aren't really able to break through these tight formations. And the legionaries are doing really well. They're not particularly powerful in combat, but their really high armor and health means the enemy just can't defeat them. My archers just behind the line are doing some danger close firing, trying to hit the enemy's general here, who you can see we've engaged in melee, and I wanted to try and stop him from escaping, so I'm attacking with all of these out of ammunition light infantry to completely encircle that general. The general decides to leave, and the light infantry aren't really good enough to stop him. Luckily, he routes at this point, so we're going to have an opportunity to defeat some of his guard before they get away. So the enemy's army is pretty much defeated at this point, actually, overall. They haven't uh, suffered a chain route. There are still units here and there that are still fighting on. <laughs> My onagers are trying to hit these tiny units, but they're, they're unable to really get kills and thus shatter them. So I had to chase them down, and I even managed to catch the enemy's general in melee between a couple of spear units. And that definitely ended the battle as the enemy's general shattered and left the field. The rest of my armies are doing a similar thing, chasing down routing units to force them to shatter so we can get the battle to end, especially because some of the naval units kept coming back from routing. They had surprisingly high morale. But overall, the battle was completely settled outside the town. The enemy's navy has been defeated. Their army has been defeated. It's a heroic victory for Vithericus. We took the town without the enemy using any of their defenders' advantage, really. We took uh, heavy losses in a few units, but overall, fine casualties. So a heroic victory. So much for all the change you were going on about. We're still just killing the natives, only now it isn't other natives paying us to do it. Still, I'll give you the point that this gig suddenly seems like it's going places. Money to be made in fighting between rival kingdoms, but this mad king is going to try and take over the world. 
probably a lot more fights and a lot more loot to be had with him than with the Camel Lords, or the Empire for that matter. Plus, this way we're sure to avoid a fight with these crazy warriors Vithericus has got. Can't be wine making these guys so bloodthirsty. I think they're just really into the Lord's work. Too bad the Lord is so tight with the coin. With the defenders of Axum's last settlement now destroyed in this heroic victory by Vithericus, it means the kingdom of Axum itself is put to bed, at least for now. It took a number of losses across our army, with the legionaries sustaining almost no losses being such a powerful defensive unit. So I'm going to occupy this settlement. My plan is to occupy the three regions of the province Ethiopia, the province nearest to the source of the Nile. So the, the last one will be Nubatia, who we're still at war with, so we'll have to go and conquer them next. But that's not going to happen anytime soon, because of course we have major public order problems and an economy to fix. We need to start fixing out the places that are damaged and doing any conversions or destructions and rebuilds uh, if we need to. You can see here this place has the ability to get spices from the east, giving us a new trade resource. Very nice on top of the furs we already get from New Eden. So these territories we're taking have the potential to be extremely valuable, which makes it an excellent base for our new order. Now moving on, we see that Nobatia's army comes to meet us. I was going to go and invade their territory, it seems they second-guessed me. Their army actually goes down the Nile, as if walking towards the source, not walking down the road in a very strange behaviour. Bad news, we learn there's a disease outbreak in New Eden. So they've now got some serious problems. You see there, uh, Vithericus successfully disrupted the secret meeting of his rivals. So even though the squalor in the region isn't actually all that bad, especially with new developments, we do have disease, and I don't think there's any surefire way to get rid of this disease other than sitting it out. So we're just going to have to hope it doesn't spread to the nearby provinces. That Nobatian force moving down the Nile appears to be almost entirely heavy spears, not a very diverse force. They've also got some elite mercenary archers and some unknown units, as well as their general who have heavy cavalry. Amalric isn't going to be much help to me. I could attempt to hinder them with a very small chance of success. So wherever they're trying to go, let them go there slower. But at the moment, they're not posing all that much of a threat to me. My army is damaged, but seeing the enemy's uh, lack of versatility, it would be quite easy to strategize, strategize sorry, against this force in battle. It's pretty obvious they're just going to form a huge line. So the question is, what can this army do? It doesn't have siege weapons as far as we know, although the other three units could be, uh, one of them could be an onager. Amalric moves closer, but it doesn't discover any more information. But I decided to just gamble that they're not going to have an onager. Uh, that means they can't attack New Eden this turn, but they could potentially attack my recent gains. So I'm going to need to leave the army here in case that's their move, or at the very least, just have it be, in, be nearby, because wherever the Nabataeans move, uh, that position is going to be closer. So we'll just wait and see what they do for now. Back up in Italia, you can see Tarentum is uh, starting to take shape. I'm finally converting the uh, Roman market buildings into a um, Germanic style one. I need this meeting hall because it improves public order and gets rid of the, uh, sorry, of the squalor penalties that are currently affecting the city. The city has major negative squalor, as you can see here, so we need to start getting rid of buildings that are ruining the squalor. And to help that out as well, I'm going to be able to upgrade this granary, which also helps out with squalor. I don't think it will quite sort everything out, but it's going to be pretty close, especially once the meeting hall is done. Plus, that gives us a little bit extra food. But as you can see at the top of the screen, we have loads of food right now. So actually, uh, although we started off our new empire in a state of massive famine, things are going very well in terms of the food supply. So now let's take a little look at the rest of Italia. You can see it's still a massive mess. The Quadians have captured the Roman capital at Mediolanum. Roman separatists still hanging around there as well. Vestanians as well. More separatists and Caledonians even in the area. Basically a huge mishmash of factions. Only Syracuse is the uh, actual Roman Empire nearby. So potentially I could go there and take it since I am at war with them if Tarentum can hold. You can also see an emergent faction. Egypt has uh, captured part of uh, the northern coast there. So we might meet them as we come up the Nile conquering Vithericus' new empire. We see the Nabataeans move towards New Eden. They can't reach it this turn, but at least we know what they're trying to do now. Bad news, Hanilla, one of the children of Gylemir, I believe, died early. We have plenty of children on the way, so in terms of raw practicality, it's not a huge issue, but of course, a tragic day for Gylemir and his wife. 
While I was here, I actually noticed my heir is about to come of age. Vithericus's son is now 16, so very soon we'll have a new officer, the heir to our kingdom, who of course will have to continue Vithericus's mission should Vithericus fall. I'm going to assign people into positions while I'm here as well, and I noticed that Ejica isn't married, and I thought it's probably about time we found a wife for him, so I can ask him to go and find a wife. It expends a lot of influence, actually almost all the influence he has to attempt to find a wife, but uh, having a wife quite often allows your influence to increase more quickly, so it's possible he'll earn that back quite rapidly. So I'm going to ask him to uh, have a look around, have a look around Tarentum, walk the streets and just see if he can find anyone who happens to take his fancy. The next order of business is to deal with the Nobatians, so Vithericus is going to have to move out and challenge them. I realised I can increase the size of my force with yet more mercenaries, and I decided I'd bring in more of these legionaries because they proved themselves to be quite good in the previous battle. So we've now got three squads of those guys uh, who are going to be a nice uh, bulky defensive line that I can put somewhere in my uh, battle formation to guarantee the enemy not getting through, at least hopefully. So I move up and engage the enemy in battle, they stand and fight. The balance bar a little bit in my favour. The enemy, of course, with the tons of heavy units, is going to have quite a defensive army, whereas all of my Gothic warriors should be quite good against them uh, by making a charge attack against their spear line. So my strategy isn't going to be anything special, but let's see if it works. All of our people have travelled far to enjoy the rumoured wealth of these lands. But as all can see, even the very seat of the disgraced Romans is no more. Free of tumult and strife and the homes we regret leaving behind. We were not only the border states of Rome who have arrived to claim what was owed. Saxons and Quadians have staked themselves on this bloodstained peninsula too. All hoping that the fate of its previous owners will not be met by them. With so many people, so many interests at hand, it is my intention to host the meeting of all those leaders who wish to rule these lands anew. We have many differences to be sure. But in these dark times, working together may be our only option for survival. So exactly as predicted, the enemy army has just formed up with all of its spears in a line, pretty much all the AI will think to do with such an army. It's uh, trying to form a skirmish line at the front there, but only has one unit, so it just looks a bit strange. And they've got some light cavalry out here on the right flank, so the units I couldn't see uh, were just some form of cavalry, nothing too threatening, they're only light troops. So my army is sneaking over, I'm the attacker, so I'm going to have to assault their position. But you can see on the map here, there are lots of hills around the enemy's position, and I'm going to attempt to use these to my advantage. Advantage. So first I moved on to a particularly high part of the hill overlooking the enemy's formation. You can see my formation has my gothic warriors in the center, the legionaries forming a nice defensive wall on the right hand side to stop the enemy getting around the flank, and I've got spearmen performing a similar role on the left flank of those warriors with all my skirmishes out front with the longer range skirmishes in the middle. My overall plan is to try and draw the enemy up the hill, make them charge up towards me. If I do start a skirmish, I'm going to have to contend with those elite archers, but I'm hoping my numerical superiority will allow me to beat them even with uh, these Germanic hunters who are actually quite bad. They've got some hurlers in here as well. So I move these guys forward, loosen them up, and order them to attack the enemy's archers. As I move, the enemy sees this and uh, decides to take the bait, even though I'd barely even started putting it out. Their entire army suddenly charges forwards, and they're going to charge right into the attack, coming up the hill as I desired. So, my skirmishers immediately turn around and run back without even really having to skirmish, and the fight's going to begin on my own terms, so the Nabatian commander has definitely uh, played into my hands here. First, he's sending his cavalry up both flanks. Here on my right flank, I've got two squads of my own cavalry sitting, waiting to receive the enemy. My cavalry are in theory better than the enemy, as we've seen before my cav actually struggle against them, but I am hoping to be able to beat them, especially because I have two units, so one unit can attack into the front, the other unit can then go around the side to get a morale debuff on the enemy's forces. One of the other cavalry units is uh, having a really hard time. It rode up and down in front of the main line, unsure where to attack. I think it wanted to attack my skirmishers, but when I withdrew the skirmishers, it just stood there and didn't know where to go. So it got cut down by javelins, while their companions tried to go up for a rear attack, but my spearmen moved back a bit and basically stopped them getting around to where the skirmishers were now positioned and now going to uh, quite easily chase them off. 
The main fight is now about to begin. You can see the enemy just charging up the hill with all of these heavy spearmen. The enemy exhausting themselves in the attack, taking arrows and javelins as they come up. And now, once they're close, my gothic warbands simply charge down the hill, slamming into the enemy's ranks and dealing enormous damage to these spearmen. They are a heavy unit with some okay stats, but my guys are absolutely amazing shock infantry. Do badly in a prolonged fight, but in a quick downhill charge against a poorly formed up army with low morale, they're going to do very well, and that's exactly the situation we have here. The legionaries on the right flank aren't going to do a, a similar bit of damage, sorry, because they just aren't very good at actually fighting enemies. They're more about just standing there and holding the line because their attack stats are quite low, but they're doing that very well. And they don't even really need to kill the enemies because, of course, we're going to wipe out the rest of their formation first. My Falksman there slamming through the enemy's lines, absolutely cutting down the enemy. The enemy just breaking all over the place here in the center, which means the enemy's army is now split onto its two flanks. And my centers are going to fall down to attack the enemy's flanks in the rear. In particular here, the enemy's general is going to take a rear charge from my Gothic Warband. So it looks like the enemy are in trouble. The Gothic Warband fighting the enemy's general appears to be enough to scare him off. He decides to abandon his spearmen here, fighting uphill against the legionaries, and try and get out of there. Luckily, I had foreseen this and had already positioned my cavalry ready to rear charge his position. So they charge a slight uphill charge, but it's enough to stop the enemy's general. Those are heavy cavalry and mine are only medium, but the enemy is already exhausted and damaged from the fight. My cavalry are quickly able to kill the enemy's general. And of course, with the enemy's army already in disarray out of formation, that's pretty much enough to finish them off. A few of the units are somehow sticking in the fight, so we did have to finish off some enemies just to really slam their army into the ground. The enemy aren't going to be coming back anytime soon. A lot of the units here routing on the on my right sorry, have full strength, so I'm going to have to chase after them to cut them down to make sure this army is defeated. A similar story on the left, but uh, overall the left was quite the bloodbath, so not many of the enemy are going to escape, especially as my fast-moving Gothic warband are going to be able to chase down the enemy's heavy units pretty easily. So, just a couple of minutes later, I got bored of chasing down the enemy, having thought I've destroyed enough of them, and the battle comes to an end. A decisive victory for Vithericus and his army. We have stopped the Nobatian invasion, and of course, this probably leaves Nobatia open to the counter-invasion that I was planning to do all along. So, in this little mini-war, everything has gone in our favour. Perhaps a sign from God. We'll see what happens next time. Continues his crusade north on the next episode of the Second Messiah.